Hello YouTubers, we're back here now. Uh, it's been a day and I wasn't going to hive them today. I said I was going to and I kind of changed my mind midway through the day because as you can see, it is overcast but it is not raining. Tomorrow is supposed to be nicer but it's not going to get down to freezing. It's not even going to get close enough for frost tonight. So I decided to go ahead with it because tomorrow I'm going to be running around because I'm actually going to hunting camp for turkey season. So it's either now or I'm going to have to miss my trip to camp. <clears throat> Alright, I've already sprayed these bees about 15 minutes ago. Light mist. This is non-medicated sugar water. At a one to one ratio I think is what it was. You just want to kind of give them a good spritzing so that they got something to hang on or eat and keep them from flying a little bit. Like I said, I gave them a spray a couple minutes ago. Spray them again. Now, <clears throat> when you get your hive and you put it together and assemble it, here's your entrance reducer. I'll show you that in a minute. This should all have been painted again. Like I said last year, my bees suffered from colony collapse disorder. So almost all my frames, and these are the plastic ones, and this was actually the top box, have already been drawn out, and these ones still have a little bit of pollen still packed into them. Now I've labeled all mine 1 through 10, um, it, unless you're OCD, don't do it, because <laughs> it'll just drive you insane not having them in order if you shift them around. But as you can see, some of these have some pollen in them, some have a little bit of a granulated sugar, and then actually the rest are almost empty. The bottom box had a lot of, uh, more like that. It was syrup that wasn't capped and gradu granulated into pretty much like sugar chunks. And if they don't want to eat it, which I don't know if they will or won't, they'll just clean it out. <coughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to remove... And that one there is packed full of stuff. Your bees might not draw out your outside ones here when you start. Let me flip this. They might not draw these out when you start. That's okay. Uh, sometimes they don't work their way around that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take frame 5 and 6 and slide them apart. That's where we're going to put our queen cage. And Let me get that crap off there. It looks like some leaked honey or something from one of their higher nests. <coughs> now, we're going to suit up. I couldn't find my gloves. Of course, there's gnats flying around too, just to add to the fun of today. I got my hive top feeder ready, and I only mixed about a quart of syrup up because, like I said earlier, my bees are gonna, they're all gonna have some stuff in there to eat, so I'm not too concerned about them eating a lot of syrup right off the bat. All right, now I'm gonna try and do my best to get this all on film while I can. All right. That makes it mad. Actually, a little bit slower today. So, what we're going to do first here is I'm going to take this off. And no matter how bad the urge is, do not peek inside your box before you're ready to do this. Because once you remove this, uh, the bees can get out. And there's like, it's just a mess. Because the first time I did this, I popped mine open inside the, uh, the barn where I was keeping them at. And I had a couple of them get out inside the actual barn. Okay, that's done. So now, 
Yep, you can see I've already got some. Those will probably be the only ones that are going to be flying, really. Here will be your queen's cage. Oops. As you can see, they're curious. They want to see what's going on. That's why they're flying all over me. What you want to do is you want to make sure your queen's alive. As you can see here, she's the one in there moving around with the dot. And you can see there's a couple tenants in there to keep her alive. Here's the sugar candy that already comes in theirs. Now you can see two bees have already died and they're kind of sitting there. So if you hang it down like this, sometimes they might block the cork hole and people say that they can't get out, but I, I think they can. Sorry about that. Here's your small cork. You want to remove this. Be landed on me there on the camera. See if I can get this cork out. Probably not. I'm going to get the here. We just want to remove that cork and that opens that sugar candy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over here. We're going to put her right down in between these two frames. And I'm not not sure how, because the frames are drawn out. Usually the frames don't have anything in them, and she can sit right in between them frames perfectly fine. There, I got them flying over me. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist her in here. We'll bend this metal back down. We're going to set her right in here. And we're just going to have to leave these frames spaced apart a good bit for her here. <clears throat> now, comes the fun part. You want to put half over top of the queen, and then the other half in the void space where your frames go. So we're going to give them one more good spray here. Just to get them a little wet, calm down. And by the way, I do have rubber bands on my pant legs to keep them from going in. So we're going to give them a quick spray again, and a tap. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but now what you want to do is you want to remove that syrup can with your hive tool. Get this one off in here. This is where your gloves come in a little bit helpful. So that you're not reaching into a angry mob of bees. Can't really get that can out of there. Of course, they won't stop flying on me. Let's get them down a little bit here. Just can't get a hold of either side of this thing. Should almost had a pair of pliers. Would have been probably good. They got it. They got it glued in here pretty good with uh, wax and their glue. There we go. Trick is just not to grab a hold of any of the bees. Take your time pulling it out. Yeah, see that's what was holding it in there. They have that glued in there pretty good. 
paper is going to go ahead and shake them off. I'm going to set that aside. Give these girls one more spray in. Well, they were really building some honeycomb in there. And the fun part. I'm going to pick out some of this extra comb they got. They don't need it in there. Their burr comb that they build. Right. We're going to... Just a little bit of, bit of a mist here. Now... We're going to replace about three of these frames. Be careful not to squish any bees. Take your time, they will move out of your way. And like I said, we're probably not gonna be able to get frame 10 back in here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm not sure. And uh, I'm just gonna the trick is try not to move too awful fast because they attack on movement really. Movement and smell. So I'm going to set this in front. That way they can find their way into their hive. Now, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to brush them down off the edges the best I can. And we're going to put the feeder on. I like to sit it down the best I can without crushing them and slide it. Try and make sure that there's none stuck on the edges. Big drone in the way here. Sometimes even if you just give them a gentle... Yep, yeah, they're in my shoes. See, that's why you put the rubber bands on. Sometimes even if you just give them a gentle blow with air, It'll be enough of discomfort that they'll actually just fly off of you. And I gotta tell you, oh, there I got one or two. It happens. From the Italians I had last year to these, these bees are a real, they're the Italians, they are a real beautiful color to them. Big old drone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually, I'm going to actually shut this lid up for now. Because these bees are just everywhere and trying to put syrup in might be a little bit hectic. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that now. And just back up. <clears throat> and give them a little bit of time here to calm down. I'm going to zoom in here, bring you in here so you can see some stuff better. As you can see, uh, your box has a little bridge across the center there to help you help hold your uh, container in there. Now here's the burr comb I was talking about. They build this in void spaces. If you don't, if there's too much room they'll build this burr comb. I gotta trim that string. I keep thinking it's a bee on me. They'll build this and that's what they were building on the side of the uh, can over there. That's why it's got, that was why it's so hard to get out. 
they'll build this in the extra space because they don't like extra space. It allows too much cold air coming in. See? And I got another one in my pant leg. Yeah, you see that? You gotta... You can't freak out or else that's how you get stung. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this back down. Let's be careful. <clears throat> now, this is the entrance reducer. And I think it's only got one way, yeah. And what that does is that makes the entrance smaller. It allows for the hot air to stay in longer <clears throat> without escaping more. Plus, in a new colony like this, they have a smaller entrance to guard. So there's less of a chance of other bugs, bees, ants getting in and actually robbing them of the honey that they're going to start or anything getting in and killing them. <clears throat> now, it's loose now. It blows off when the wind hits it. They'll glue that tight in no time. And I'm actually going to pop off my suit. I got one or two bees still hanging on it here. Always make sure your suit is uh, bee free before you take it back inside. I hang mine out in the garage so it doesn't matter to me. But it's just a little warning. <clears throat> you got a bee right here on the camera. I wish I could video them. As you can see, now there's my grandfather's farm. That's where I had my bees last year. It was out in front of the barn. That there is a pear tree. And this here is also a pear tree. And this is going to give them a little bit of shade. Not a lot, but as you can see over there now, you can't really see it, but there's a pond. There's a stream right there, and then there's this drainage ditch behind us. Lots of water everywhere. And I will just literally land on my head, and he's not leaving. I'm going to let him go. <clears throat> Lots of ragweed. Plenty of dandelions, and I literally just mowed like yesterday. And they're popping back up. And this bee just does not want to leave. There we go. Have to brush them off. Be extremely gentle with your bees. When you smack them is when they're going to sting. As you can see, they're starting to find the entrance. They're coming in and out, in and out. Now this box, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of dead ones. They're going to push out the uh, the entrance. Uh, the box I'll probably take away in a day or two here because they'll just keep coming back into it and getting inside. And then some of them will get stuck inside and can't get out and gets cold and they'll die. So I'm going to remove that. <clears throat> now, here's my sugar syrup. Like I said, I made uh, four cups, which is a quart, uh, of water. And I did one to one, which I'm not exactly sure what the ratio is on that. But I pretty much put uh, three and a half cups of sugar and then a block of sugar that I had made in the sugar boards last year but didn't get to use. And that's pretty close. Like I said, they got plenty of sugar and some leftover honey in there. And I keep an eye on them anyway, so if they drain it within a day, I know I need to make a lot more. That is medicated. I put one teaspoon of Honey Bee Healthy in it, and it gives it, like I said, a really good nectar smell. They'll love that. And we'll show you here in a minute. And if she's still in the cage, I'm obviously going to leave the cage in there until I get back, which will be Sunday. The first thing I'm going to do is check this. Most people let it in there a week anyways. <laughs> See how quickly they calm down? Bees will travel up to, I believe it's a mile to a mile and a half looking for food. The worst possible place you could plant flowers is right in front of the landing pad. When them bees come out, the first thing they'll do, and you'll see this as you watch them, is they come out, they'll orient themselves with the sun, and they'll fly straight up away from the hive. So any flowers that are directly in front of them most likely aren't going to get found very easy. It's too close for the other bees to be able to signal with the dance of where they're at. So, say I wanted to plant a garden of flowers just for the bees, I would do it right there where my old swimming pool was. That's probably 30 yards away. <coughs> It'd be easier for them to find. Now, if your bees do not have water at the ready, like mine do, which is right, there's a small stream. It's actually got a lot of branches in it they can land on. Like I said, there's a pond and a creek. If they don't have water at the ready, or if it's a good bit of ways away, because the bees will have to make trips back and forth every day. At one point in their life cycle, that's what they'll do, is they'll collect, the, uh, collect water, and that helps cool the hive down. I've seen a lot of videos of what people do. I might put a chicken feeder out here with some stones in it so they have something to land on. Uh, one thing I saw, and I can't remember, I, I wish I remember people's usernames on 
YouTube and stuff, but he, uh, him and his wife <coughs> actually put lids down to uh, storage totes, rocks on them, and then filled them with water. That way they were only about maybe an inch deep and the bees could land on the rocks and they were easy to refill and they weren't a lot of sitting water that mosquitoes got into it. Uh, you can put a bucket of water with a, a styrofoam peanuts in it. They'll fly over and land on that. But again, if you put it too close, they might not find it. I had a bucket with uh, a lot of uh, cut grass in it. So the grass was moist. They could land on the grass and get water. They never touched it. They flew the whole way down to the pond. It was the closest source of water where they used to be. But here it's right behind them everywhere. So I don't think I'm going to have to worry about watering them. So, all right. We're going to go up here and we are going to pop this open. And there's one right there sitting. I don't know if we can get her on film or not. Just resting. <clears throat> you may have heard me earlier saying about drones. When you're new to this, uh, you may think spotting a drone is going to be impossible. It's really simple. <clears throat> the drones are the males. They have no stinger. Their primary, re uh, primary reason for being is just to simply impregnate new queens. And let me see if I can find one here quick because they're really easy to spot and you'll hit whoops you'll hear them before you see them sometimes because they're so much bigger ah perfect they're so much bigger than a regular bee they're louder see them three small ones and the one big one I got one laying on my face these three here are honeybees and that's a drone see how much bigger he is how his eyes are the same size as his head his whole head's nothing but eye I got bees landing on my face. As to where the honeybees, their eyes are a little bit smaller and not as bulbous. He has more of a bumblebee shaped uh, thorax to him. I got another one landing on my head. Just see how much the size difference to him too. And he's a little bit darker. I don't know if they all are or not, but that's a drone. They're harmless. No stinger to them. When they fly around, they're extremely loud. I didn't hear that one leave, and it's not on my head, so I'm hoping he didn't fly down my shirt. If he did, you'll hear me yell here in a minute. <clears throat> All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this top off. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take the bee brush, and we're going to actually brush all the bees off this can here. If we can. You know, they kind of felt like it was part of their home now. They were building their comb on it and everything, but... I'm going to utilize this syrup as well. The can has three small holes punched in it, and that's just enough that they can drink out of it. And I'm going to take my hive tool, and I'm going to punch some holes in it here quick. And we're going to utilize that. <sighs> Loud noises do not go good with your bees. So try not to bang anything when you're doing this. And you're taking your hive apart, especially when you're popping pieces apart and it cracks really loud. That'll set the bees on full alert. Let's see if we can see this here. Yep, you got a good view. <coughs> That's some pretty thick sugar water there. I didn't know it was that thick. Last year, I just let the can sit there and drain out. I had bees eating at it for like three weeks. This year, I figured it'd be easier just to pour it all back in. I'm gonna pour the rest of mine in. Much thinner. It's actually above the rocks, which I don't care for, but now, there's still a little bit in there. I'm going to save that. I'm trying to get all this out of here before I shut this. I don't really want any of this extra laying around. <coughs> you can't tell from the camera because it's kind of hard to tell even in person, but 
the water, uh, the syrup is actually sloping to the front. And that's because this hive is at ever so slight of an angle towards the front. That way, any condensation that might build up inside will land on this front wall, run down right to the entrance and out the entrance. Because cold water onto a bee will kill a bee. Yep, there's one in the water. And trust me, bees have amazing scent. That's how they communicate. So don't kid yourself thinking, eh, it's got her stinger out. I don't want to attempt it. <laughs> and I'm going back up my shoe again. I don't know what is it about my pant leg that they find so fascinating? Let's see if I can get her out of here. It wasn't, there was one bee in here when I started this. They can smell that syrup. They're already coming up out of the tunnel. They'll go down them little footholes, rest on the footholes and drink that syrup. I'm gonna get this bee out of here quick. And that one, and I wanna get this shut up because it felt like a mist of rain just hit me. And of course, I got bugs landing on my head. Bees all through my hair. I'm gonna put the lid back on. Make sure there's no bees in there. And I had two bricks on, you really don't need to, but I'm gonna put two back on anyways. I came home the one day here and actually uh, was walking the dog in the front yard, and the inner cover was in the front yard laying. The storm we got blew the top off of that hive. Or something just popped. Blew the top off of the hive and actually threw it the whole way into the front yard. It was such a bad storm. All right. We do not need the inner cover because of the hive top feeder. You will not need this right now. When we remove the feeder later, closer to summer, then you'll put the. Uh, come on, bees. I keep landing in my hair. Then you'll put the cover back on. All right. That'll give them a little protection if it does decide to start spitting rain on them. And that'll uh, let them find their way back into the hive. So I'm going to pick up the tools, clean the bees that are sitting on me off, and I'm going to go pack up and load this video up. So thanks for watching. Um, hope it gets you interested and enough to stay tuned and finish watching the year here with me. Like I said, I'm going to be putting all my stuff on. Uh, Sunday I'll be back to open the hive, and if the queen wasn't out yesterday, uh, I'm going to reopen the hive anyway Sunday do an inspection, check it out, and uh, show you what we're looking for in our first inspection.